greetings to one and all you are listening to mmjc fortnightly podcast in our earlier edition of podcast we had with us mr shravan pai from rnd team with whom we deliberated upon confusions and ambigu- ambiguities in preparation of board's report in today's edition we shall continue this discussion with mr shravan in our earlier edition we discussed about applicability of board's report format to small companies and opcs ambiguities in preparation of aoc1 and aoc2 and disclosure of annual returns on the website of the company in today's edition we shall deliberate upon some more ambiguities in the preparation of board's report so my first question today is with respect to the disclosure of loans guarantees securities and investments made under section 186 Section 186, Subsection 4 of the Companies Act 2013 requires the disclosure of loans or guarantees given, or securities provided, or investments made in the financial statements of the company, along with the purpose for which the loan, guarantee, or security shall be used by the receiver. The question here is that whether the loan, guarantee, security, or investment given to a wholly owned subsidiary. should also be disclosed in the financial statements as well as in the board's report or this disclosure is exempt as the they are not required to obtain shareholders approval due to the exemption under subsection 3 of section 186 as at the time of granting of loan guarantee or security or investment the maximum limits are not applicable Uh, thanks guja the answer to this question can be found in second proviso to section 186 subsection 3 the first proviso exempts the maximum limit while giving of loan investment security and guarantee which is given to a wholly owned subsidiaries but the immediate text proviso imposes a requirement of disclosure in the financial statements as per section 186 subsection 4 further clause g of subsection 3 of section 134 of the act states that the disclosures need to be given in the board's report about loans guarantees or investments which are made under section 186 so even if the loan guarantee security or investments are uh, given to a wholly owned subsidiaries it must be disclosed along with the full particulars and the purpose of utilization by the recipient should also be disclosed in the financial statements and the board report as well my next question is regarding the disclosure of resignation of director in the board's report section 168 subsection 1 says that the resignation disclosure regarding resignation of director should be given in the board's report but section 134 which talks about the contents of the board report does not speak anything regarding the dis- uh, resignation related disclosures in such a scenario whether the company should give the disclosure regarding resignation of director in the board's report or not See, it is a very settled principle that a specific provision shall prevail over a general provision. Since Section One Sixty Eight is a specific provision with respect to resignation of director, its provision with respect to disclosure shall prevail over Section One Thirty Four. Therefore, I feel that even if Section One Thirty Four of Section Three does not talk about disclosure regarding uh, resignation of directors in the board report, it must be disclosed since Section One Sixty Eight so requires. Now let's talk. something about the performance evaluation of the directors as per subsection 2 of section 178 the nomination and remuneration committee nrc is required to determine the manner of effective evaluation of the performance of the board its committees and individual directors to be undertaken by the board nrc or by a independent external agency further as per rule 8 sub rule 4 of companies accounts rules there should be disclosed in the board's report the performance evaluation of the directors but there arises a confusion when we study the applicability of both these provisions as per rule 4 of companies appointment of appointment and qualification of directors rules 2014 the constitution of nrc is applicable to such companies whose paid up capital is 10 crores or more or whose turnover is rupees 100 crores or more or whose outstanding or who have a outstanding borrowing debenture or deposit of rupees 50 crores or more whereas as per clause q of sub section 3 of section 134 read with rule 8 sub rule 4 of companies accounts rules 
companies having paid up capital of rupees 25 crore rupees or more are required to disclose in the board's report about the performance evaluation of the directors that means there are some companies to whom constitution of nrc and section subsection 2 of section 178 is applicable but the disclosure regarding performance evaluation is not applicable because their paid up capital is less than 25 crores then the question in such scenario is that whether such companies should undertake performance evaluation of directors and not disclose it in the board's report or it should not undertake performance evaluation at all um, as rightly mentioned by you section 178 talks about undertaking performance evaluation of directors and section 134 read with rule 8 sub rule 4 of companies accounts rules talks only about disclosure with respect to such evaluation therefore even if the requirement of disclosing performance evaluation in the board report is not applicable to any company due to the paid up capital being less than rupees 25 crores then also the company will have to undertake the evaluation since section 178 is applicable to it only the requirement of disclosure in the board report will not be applicable okay that is an appropriate interpretation of interplay of sections now my next question is that Rule eight of companies' accounts rules requires the companies to disclose about in the board's report about the formulation of risk management policy and the efforts taken for reduction of risk, etc. But the Act at no place talks about formulation of risk management policy. Therefore, the companies generally may write in their board's report that this provision relating to risk management is not applicable to them. Do you have anything to say in this regard? Yes, you are right in saying that the Act nowhere requires formation of risk management policy, and therefore some smaller companies may prefer writing as not applicable in this part. However, a point worth noting in this case is that the lenders in the credit of the company may not be satisfied on knowing that the company does not do anything for risk mitigation, and it may adversely impact the investors or creditors or lenders' perception about the company. Therefore, I feel it is advisable to give at least some basic information about the existence of a risk management system as per the size of the company in this part. I agree reporting is done to give comfort to the stakeholders of the company about its proper functioning therefore the company must try to address all the concerns of all stakeholders okay my next doubt also is on the similar lines the set rule 8 requires the companies to disclose about in the measures about energy conservation and technology absorption by the company At quite a lot of times companies write not applicable in this part as well what do you have to say about this as you rightly said this is also on the same lines as discussed earlier although conservation of energy may not be the main business of the company but today we are living in a continuously depleting kind of environment and stakeholders would definitely be interested in knowing what the company has voluntarily done towards energy conservation and environmental protection one more thing i would like to highlight here is that Under the companies at 1956, there was one section 217 read with companies disclosure of particulars in the report of board of directors rules 1988, which prescribed a similar requirement on energy conservation. This rules prescribed that every company should comment upon energy conservation measures taken. However, total energy consumption and energy consumption per unit of production was required to be mentioned by certain sector of industry only. So under the companies at 1956, some companies could mention that they are not required to mention about the details of total energy consumption and energy consumption per unit of production. But the companies at 2013 does not provide any such specific list of companies who need to provide certain industry specific data. Hence, disclosures related to energy conservation would be applicable to all companies except small companies and OPCs, as the abridged format of board's report does not mention about this disclosure. Therefore, the provisions relating to energy conservation are applicable to all other companies, and they do not have an option to say that these provisions are not applicable to them. I would like to add one more aspect to this discussion. As we are all as we are all aware, top one thousand companies are required to give a business responsibility and sustainability report (BRSR) along with its annual report. Further, as per SEBI circular dated twelfth July two thousand twenty three. top 150 listed companies are required to give disclosure relating to compliance of brsr by its value chain partners 
वैल्यू चेन एनकम्पस इज सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ वेंडर एंड कस्टमर्स ऑफ द लिस्टेड कंपनी दैट मीन्स सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ वेंडर्स एंड कस्टमर्स ऑफ द लिस्टेड कंपनी शुड बी बी आर एस आर कंप्लाइंट इन सच अ केस इफ एनी कंपनी हु इज अंडर फॉलोइंग अंडर सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ वेंडर और कस्टमर लिस्ट ऑफ एनी लिस्टेड कंपनी सेज इन इट्स बोर्ड रिपोर्ट दैट एनर्जी कंजर्वेशन इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल टू इट then the listed company to whom brsr compliance is applicable will face difficulty in disclosure therefore this may also be a difficult situation for the vendor company yes definitely companies need to be mindful of these changes in the regulatory environment and must undertake reporting accordingly now my next question is there is a requirement under section 134 subsection 3 clause l that the company should disclose in the board's report about such material changes and commitments which have impact on the financial position of the company and which have taken place after the end of financial year to which the financial statements relate and the date of board's report but the illustrative list of such events or information which needs to be covered in this part is not given therefore the companies are required to determine such events on their own in such a case companies may inadvertently miss out on some important events or information so for the benefit of our listeners can you please provide an illustrative list of such events or information which need to be covered in this part sure utuja as per section 134 sub section 3 clause l of the act only those events which have an impact on the financial position of the company are to be disclosed under this section therefore one may include all kinds of corporate actions like private placement payment of interim dividend commencement of a new business activity acquisition or sale of subsidiary agreements or court orders which results in a gain or liability for the company strikes lockouts or any other reason for hampering uh, production or a crystallization of a contingent liability etc but what or event or information would be covered would depend on case to case basis okay that is quite an illustrative list now to conclude with would you like to throw some light on provisions relating to signing of board report and its annexures yes sure firstly about signing the board report itself the board's report must be signed by the chairperson of the company if it is so authorized by the board of the directors and where he is not so authorized it shall be signed by at least two directors and one of whom shall be a managing director there is no requirement on the cfo or cs even if voluntarily appointed to sign the board's report Further, as per uh, fifth proviso to Rule Seven of the Companies Registration Office and Fees Rules 2023, any director signing any report or any document shall, along with the signature, mention his den, designation, and address. So it is necessary to mention the den, designation, and address of the signing director in the board's report. It is okay even if the address of the company and not the residential address of the director is mentioned in this place. With regard to the annexures, if any, to the board's report. The, those also need to be signed by the same directors who are signing the board's report however i wish to highlight one difference about the signing requirement of csr report which is also annexed to the board's report csr report has to be signed by the chairman of the csr committee even if he has not signed the actual board report and by the md or ceo or any other director is the case maybe so there can be a situation where signatories to the csr annexure to board's report and the signatories to the main board's report maybe different individuals okay that was quite an illustrative discussion shravan thank you very much for your insightful inputs i am sure our listeners would definitely be benefited by listening to this discussion thank you for listening to us please feel free to write to us about your suggestions at mmjc info@mmjc.in thank you